to finish this drawing, I want to review that the last thing we drew was this shape. I changed the color of it so that you can see it when we move it onto our part. It was currently lime green, but if this is also lime green, you'll have a hard time seeing it. I've also deleted some things in this view to repeat a step you need to do to make sure you know what you're doing with regards to putting these holes in place. So I need to copy from here some information. Now I need my center lines and hole locations from the two-dimensional object. So I can pick the copy command. And I'm going to copy everything that's a center line and my location of my counter sinks. Okay. Don't worry if you pick more than what you need. After you select your objects, hit enter. I need a base point and a destination point. I need a point that's common to from here to here for this to work correctly. A common point would be this corner. So I'll pick this corner and I'll move it to the same corner. That means it's exactly the same place. Don't worry, of course, about more copies. Hit the escape key. Don't worry about this extra dimension. You can delete it if you'd like. All right, so now I have a copy of where my holes are going to go, which are these here. I need three of them, so I'm going to pick copy and make three copies of this feature. All right, and now we're going to move them into place. We are going to use get to the page. Okay. We're going to do step 16, align them into place using the source and destination points. Then we're going to subtract them from the large hinge. So, type in align, select one of our objects and hit enter. The base points. The base points we're going to use are going to be called quadrants. And we're going to also send them to intersections. For example, a line. I had to restart that step. Pick this object, enter. I'll pick, there's a quadrant there. There's going to be four quadrants. I'm going to use the bottom of the cylinder to attach them to the bottom of the part, which is right here. This is the smaller circle. So this one will go to here. This side will go here. And the third one, the bottom, will go here. Notice I went in a clockwise direction. Once I pick the third one, you'll see it move and rotate. Did you see that? Okay. So it's in place. It's inside the part. I will show you by adding the color. See it's inside the part. They're overlapping each other. Okay. It had to, you have to be precise for this to work. Let's do another one. Align. Select a part, enter, quadrant. I pick this one first this time. You have to go in the same clockwise direction. You can't just go random or they'll come in upside down. And you don't want that to happen. Okay, that one moved a lot faster. I'm going to bring this one closer to really see what I'm doing. Okay, align. Select the object and enter. I'll start here this time. That belongs here. Continue in a clockwise direction. This one will belong here. Notice I'm picking the inside circle because it's the smaller one. And here to here. Okay, now they're all aligned. There they are. All right. I know it looks like an optical illusion, but it's correct. Let me remove this. And that now it's time to subtract them. So type in subtract. And remember, we use subtract without any color on, so we're using 2D wireframe. I'll select the large object, which is what's yellow. Enter. And now I'm going to subtract my three holes. So I pick all three, because I don't want these anymore, and hit enter. And you will see that it turns to the remaining color, which is yellow. And this is what we've done so far. And there they are. Have everything worked perfectly, you should see right through the part. If it did not work, unfortunately, you have to undo your steps and try again. All right, and now for the last step, the fillet command. All right, we need to fill up these corners. 
I don't remember this radius, so I better find out. So I gotta go turn on my dimensions to see. And it's 3 sixteenths. So, this is very simple. The fillet command works like this. Pick fillet. Hit the down arrow with your mouse so you can pick the radius. Type in the radius. In this case, 3 sixteenths. Pick this little edge right here, and then hit enter. It'll ask it, select the edge again, pick it anyway. You could also pick the other side. I'll just do one at a time though. And there it is, rounded it off. I want to do them separately so I can demonstrate that again. Okay, fill it. Hit the down arrow, set your radius. We've already done that as you can see, so hit enter. Select the first object and hit enter. It will ask you for the edge, pick the same edge again. You do have to do it twice for 3D and hit enter. And there it is, rounded off. Okay? Our part is officially finished. You will notice that the stuff I copied over included dimensions because of these dots that you saw earlier are called death points. When you take the dimensions off, you'll, see, you'll still see those dots. Those are your dimensions. Be careful not to delete those dots. I don't need any of my two-dimensional work anymore that I use for, for practice, for use for making my 3D object. The fastest way to take care of that is just to move the solid object out of the way and delete everything we don't need anymore. And my three-dimensional object is done. I hope that yours is also just as successfully finished. You can check it from all directions. And you repeat the steps for the other file. Now for the file name. Obviously this was a PBA two barrel drawing, but when you finish it ends up as a three barrel drawing. So do a save as, and this time we'll give it a whole new name with your name on it. So it'll be your last name, well, first and last name, okay? And this is a PBA three barrel drawing in 3D and you finish that part.